So it looks like the Biden family secrets are starting to come out thanks to star witness Tony Boblinski, a former Navy officer who went in with James and first son Hunter Biden in a venture involving Chinese government linked CEFC China Energy. In his opening statement before the House Oversight Committee a few days ago, Hunter Biden's former business partner, Tony Boblinski, publicly accused the first son and his uncle, the first brother, Jim Biden, of lying under oath about the nature of their business dealings with Chinese conglomerate CEFC. Now, according to Boblinski, James Biden lied extensively to congressional investigators last month about the degree of Joe Biden's involvement in his overseas business dealings. I mean, you really should have seen it, you guys. One exchange that really caught media attention was with him and House Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So AOC asked, what crime have you personally witnessed done by President Joe Biden? His reply, how much time do I have to go through it? Then he goes off and mentions corruption statutes, RICO, conspiracy, FARA. He even mentioned how he approached Democrat Representative Ro Khanna first about texts implicating Joe Biden in Hunter James business in 2020. He said he has extensive emails with Congressman Ro Khanna in 2021 and 2024, where he begged him and his staff to sit down with him and look at his BlackBerry phones that the Democrats are so focused on to hire forensic experts and go through all of the factual information that he had. Maybe this is why Khanna was so quick to scurry out of there, according to Bovlinski. And most notably, where was the live coverage from the mainstream media? The three major news networks largely bypassed live coverage of the latest chapter of the House GOP-led inquiry of whether to impeach President Joe Biden. CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News provided updates of the hearing, but very scant live coverage of the proceeding itself. Really, what do you guys think? Well, don't worry, you guys. Well, mainstream media may be dropping the ball, but you know I'm always here, ready to go on another informative deep dive with you guys. So let's go. So here's the heated exchange between Tony Boblinski and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below who won this argument. I have a quick question, simple. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden commit a crime? I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did you deal, witness the president commit it, a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime? Do you, uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go through it? It is simple, you name the crime. Uh, Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, it, RICO and conspiracy. What is it, what is, Farah. what is the crime, sir? You, you want, Specifically. You, just, uh, you keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question, I answered the question. No. RICO, you're obviously not familiar with. Corruption excuse statutes. Excuse me, sir, excuse Farah. me, sir, excuse me, sir. RICO is not a crime. It is a category. What I is the It's a category crime? of crimes that you're then charged You under have charges. A long hundred You have charges. Yeah. Sir, please you want me to name, name the exact statute sir, under RICO. Yes. Oh, well, it's funny. In this committee room, everyone's not here. There's over eight All right, sir. I reclaim my time. Lawyers that I went to law school. I reclaim my time. I I'll reclaim my time. You guys okay, thank you, sir. I reclaim my time. Rico. So, what do you guys think? Who do you think won that argument? Now, I read some of the comments on that clip. One had a lot of likes that said AOC needs to go back to bartending. Another one mentioned how this woman needs to be removed from Congress. And the ones that had the most likes plainly said Trump 2024. So you kind of get a feel for the public sentiment based on those comments. And that's just part of Tony Boblinski's testimony to Congress. It definitely looks like he's ruffling a lot of Democratic feathers, doesn't it? So another part of his opening statement that certainly caught a lot of people's attention, it's when he accused the first son, Hunter Biden, and first brother, Jim Biden, of lying under oath about the nature of their business dealings with Chinese conglomerate CEFC. In his words, Jim Biden lied extensively to congressional investigators last month about the degree of Joe Biden's involvement in his overseas business dealings. As for Hunter Biden, Boblinski cited three examples of alleged perjury from Hunter Biden's sworn testimony last month, accusing Hunter of lying about the timeline of his business relationship with CEFC, his father's interactions with his business associates, and the threatening text that he sent a Chinese businessman in which he demanded payment and said he was sitting next to his father. Now, Hunter Biden started working with CEFC in 2017, at least that's what he says. But Tony Boblinski, based on conversations he said he had with Hunter, insists that there business ties with CEFC goes back further, possibly to Joe Biden's time as vice president. So Hunter wants to stand by his statement that his dad never interacted with his business partners and he's always denied any involvement of his dad in his business ventures. Yet, 
Hunter did confirm Joe Biden met Boblinski and multiple foreign business partners and spoke to business associates on speakerphone. Really, I know it's hard to get their story straight, but bear with me, guys. All right, so Tony Boblinski, he didn't hold back in his testimony. In his recent testimony and the opening statement he delivered, Boblinski also accuses Hunter Biden of lying about the details of a text that he sent to Chinese business associate in July 2017, where he appeared to leverage his father's influence. So according to Boblinski, he leveraged his father's presence next to him in that infamous text to kind of strong arm CEFC into paying Hunter immediately. But when they asked Hunter Biden about it, he later said that the text was a mix-up sent to the wrong guy who wasn't even linked to the CEFC. But Boblinski said Hunter was using his dad's name to pressure CEFC into paying up pronto. So then in March 2017, State Energy HK, a company connected to CEFC, sent $3 million to Rob Walker. Rob Walker, who was business partners with Hunter Biden at the time. Now from that, Walker distributed roughly $1 million to the State Energy HK Fund to bank accounts linked to Hunter Biden and other members of the Biden family. And this is according to official bank records, you guys. The $3 million wire to Walker took place after Hunter Biden and his business associates held meetings with CEFC and helped explore business deals, according to Walker's testimony and Hunter Biden's federal tax indictment. So Joe Biden's vice presidency concluded only weeks before the state energy HK payment came in. Definitely some interesting timing to say the least. But seriously guys, if you're finding this investigation into Biden's business dealings as gripping as I do, definitely do me a huge favor, hit the like button down below. It really does help out the channel and it ensures that you won't miss out on any of our future deep dives. And while you guys are at it, why not subscribe, right? Join our growing community for more content that gets right to the heart of the matter, just like this one. All right, so let's get back to it. So Boblinski called out James Biden for not lying under oath during his testimony, particularly about their past interactions and CEFC. So James Biden behind closed doors met last month insisted he never met with Boblinski, which clashes with what Boblinski and Hunter Biden have said. Even when shown evidence that contradicted his statements, James Biden doubled down on his denial that the May 2017 meeting with Boblinski and Joe and Hunter Biden took place. He also denied any involvement in a deal through Oneida Holdings aimed at partnering with Boblinski for a CEFC project. When confronted with his signature on the Oneida agreement, James Biden said that he could not recall being part of the Oneida arrangement. This deal eventually fell through and the Bidens moved on to another venture with CEFC called Hudson West III, focusing on U.S. energy deals. Boblinski didn't hold back in his statement, pointing out other instances where he felt Hunter and James Biden weren't honest, eager to dive into even more deals and more details about the testimony. He said he hopes the he said he hopes the committee will hold them accountable for their perjury before them. Now, alongside Boblinski, Jason Galanis, who's currently serving time, testified virtually about his past business ventures with Hunter Biden and others, highlighting Joe Biden's alleged involvement in securing deals with Chinese and Russian partners. So according to Galanis, Hunter Biden's main contribution was his family name and connections through his father, saying that the entire value add of Hunter Biden to the business was his family name and his access to his father, then Vice President Joe Biden. So Galanis also mentioned how he's risking his safety to testify because of alleged retaliation by the Justice Department during his time in prison for participating in a fraudulent bond scheme. The impeachment inquiry is primarily focusing on Hunter Biden's foreign business dealings with individuals and entities in Ukraine, Russia, China, Kazakhstan, and Romania. Interestingly though, Hunter Biden declined to show up at the public hearing after previously urging the committee to allow him the opportunity to testify publicly. Something we're gonna get to in a whole nother video. Make sure you guys watch out for that one, all right? Leading the hearing examining the Biden family's business dealings is House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer. So according to him, what is apparent after over a year of investigation is that the Bidens do not work in any traditional sense of the word. They do not work as consultants or lawyers or advisors. The Bidens don't sell a product or a service service or set of skills. The Bidens sell Joe Biden. And near the end of all of that is our star witness from this hearing, Tony Boblinski. So Boblinski has been waiting over four years to say his grievances to Congress. And for many, he is the most credible witness ever to testify in Congress. I even read some comments saying, we need Bobolinsky in Congress instead of some of the liars. What do y'all think? So Bobolinsky definitely packed a lot of heat in his explosive testimony to Congress. According to what we've talked about already, Bobolinsky also said in his opening statement that Representative Jamie Raskin and Representative Dan Goldman lied to the media. He also alleged Hunter Biden's attorney, Abe 
Lowell has tried to smear him while defending what he described as a successful business career following his time in the Navy. He claimed to possess evidence showing that the president profited from his son's business deals in China, including a widely cited email that alleged references 10% held by H for the big guy, which Bobulinski says is a reference to the president. And perhaps most disturbingly about all of this, Bobulinski claims he came to Democrat Representative Ro Khanna about all of this and that he even has texts implicating Joe Biden in Hunter James' business in 2020. Bobulinski told House Oversight Committee that he was begging Representative Ro Khanna to go on CNN and tell the world in October 2020 about the allegations and apparently had a receptive audience initially. So Khanna ducked out of the proceedings before raising the subject with a witness. But according to Bobulinski, he has had extensive emails with Congressman Ro Khanna in 2021 and 2022 where he begged him and his staff to sit down with him and look at his BlackBerry phones that the Democrats are so focused on to hire forensic experts and go through all the factual information that he had. And the fact that he didn't even address Bobulinski and then scurried out of the hearing it was just disgusting to Bobulinski. So Bobulinski's heated statement comes as House Republicans, they're seeking to gather evidence of corruption against the president as part of the impeachment inquiry, which was launched in September. But what do you guys think? Are we gonna see President Joe Biden get impeached before November? Me? I just hope Bobulinski has a lot of bodyguards to protect them. The witness people are calling the man the truth. Seriously guys, if you haven't before, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel and tapping that notification bell. The next updates are going to come in fast and be fire. Y'all don't wanna miss them. In fact, I'm already working on the next one right now. I'll see you then.